We're the Lockwoods, and we're traveling the world to experience up close and in person all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise be consuming only through textbooks and TV. After spending our first night in Japan in a cramped robot hotel in Tokyo's Ginza district, we took a cross-country bullet train to class things up significantly. We're spending two nights at the five-star Four Seasons Kyoto, where we'll soak up their 800-year-old family-friendly luxury and devour our first bites of true Japanese sushi. But why the long face? Let's get to it. We just arrived in Kyoto from Tokyo on a bullet train. So you're gonna have to check out a previous episode to see what that whole thing was about. But we've got to find a taxi and get to our hotel because we are going to go see our best friend. This station looks so nice. The Tokyo station was really clean, seemed pretty pristine. And downstairs there was a lot of kiosks like this for food. But this seems even cleaner, even prettier. The floors are so clean, they're shiny. We found the taxis. Thank you. It should be a really quick drive to the hotel. We are just dying of anticipation back here. We cannot wait to see our friends. They're already at the hotel. So even Colt's like, are they gonna be outside? Are they gonna be inside? I wanna be outside because we just wanna see them right away. We're about a minute away. <laughs> Konnichiwa, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, dude? Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you in the yeah. flesh. Finally, <laughs> we've been waiting for you guys like for an hour. Hi, how you doing, honey? Yeah, good. <laughs> we're staying at the Four Seasons Kyoto and we're meeting up with our best friends and we're gonna introduce all of them to you in a minute. First, we're gonna go up and do a room tour and then we're gonna head out and check out Kyoto. Come check out our room. This is just one of two rooms we have here and we're in the hallway and there's tons of storage. So that's a closet. I'll show you right here. With a safe and some drawers. And this is great space to put your luggage, throw your bag. This is a closet. And right here, these are closets. So closet, 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 tons of space. Right next to the little mini bar. Ah. And there's more in here. Ah. We haven't had any sake yet since we've been in Japan. I'm sure that's coming soon. Up here, tea and coffee, that's complimentary. Also, the water is complimentary. And there's an espresso, which I love, and an electric tea kettle, and you can use it with a traditional tea kettle. We are going to learn the traditional tea serving way tomorrow, and that'll be on our next episode, so subscribe and stay tuned for that. But this room is gorgeous. We have a huge king bed, big TV, desk, and a big living room. This is so different than the other Japanese hotels that we've seen and been to. They're usually pretty compact and hard to fit a family of four in them, but not this place. So big living room, it's overlooking the balcony with the garden. This is an 800 year old pond and garden. And look at this incredible view from our back balcony. I mean, it overlooks this entire incredible koi pond, the gardens, beautiful. And we have a little welcome platter. Tons of fruit, this is awesome. What is this? It could be a kumquat. But yeah, oh my gosh, all this fruit looks really good. This is a lemon. There was a banana, but Phil ate it already. Oh my gosh, look how bright this orange looks. Awesome, and these strawberries and also the dragon fruit. But that's not all. We also have this edible zen garden. We have these little pokey sticks because these are matcha chocolate ganache. And I'm gonna try one. Mmm, love that green tea flavor. And the ganache, it just kind of melts in your mouth and smooth and easy and so delicious. I kind of want another one right away. I wonder if this is something too. Yeah, it says here it's 70% cacao chocolate. Super good. Wow, that's good. That is delicious. I feel like the theme of the room is what Kyoto is known for, which is being an old traditional style uh, city. And all the woodwork and the zen garden and even the florals on the walls here, they're just delicately painted and the, the wallpaper here, it feels like a, a paper thin uh, door, but it's wallpaper. Well, let's check out the bathroom. 
you have a shower over here and a bathtub over here. But if that's not luxurious enough for you, you can turn this into a very large shower, basically a wet room. Watch this. Open this up right here, kind of sponges to the wall, and then this side too. So one big room, awesome. Now over here we have the two vanities and all the amenities you need like robes and towels and oh yeah, so this uh, skincare line, it's Lorenzo Villarese, our friend in Firenze. So we did a tour in Florence of his perfumery or his perfume museum and we learned a ton about perfumes and him and he's just like a genius of scent. So that's awesome, love it, can't wait to use it. Oh, it's like citrusy and just like a hint of floral. Oh, smells like a spa, a citrus spa. And then right over here is the toilet room. Ooh, this is a nice little spa-like room in here. <laughs> Why did that happen? <laughs> they should have had this in the robot hotel. I guess there's gotta be a sensor in here and when you walk in, the toilet opens for you and it sprays inside a little bit to freshen up the, the inner bowl. Oh my gosh, that's nuts. And you can see that little button is on, it's heating the seat for you. But this brings us back to the entrance of the room and there are two really cool things I still wanna show you. Right here, this little closet is for laundry. So you throw your clothes in there, you can hang them up, throw them on the floor or the shelf and press the button over here and press the butler button there. And I did tell you that this was two rooms and they're connected right here. These really beautiful doors and it's so great to have the connecting rooms. It's great for families because your kids aren't gonna be too far away. You have a direct access to them. You don't have to worry about them being down the hall or next door even. The only difference in this room is that they have the two beds versus our one big king. And they have the same beautiful view of the Zen Garden, but we're gonna give you a tour of that in the next episode because it's raining today. All right, are you guys ready to go check out Kyoto and hang out with our best friends? Yeah! Woo! Yeah, let's go! So here we are with our best friends on the planet, Mom Duty. You gotta follow them on their YouTube channel and on their Instagram channel. This is Nelvin. Hello! Rocio. <laughs> And over here, there are two twins. Hello. Knox. Hello. And subscribe, Mia. To, um, subscribe to Always Be Changing Family. Hi. And Mia. Hi. With subscribe. Little twins. We're going to journey on into Gion in search of kimonos and geishas and see what else we can explore in Kyoto together. And we have a little bit of rain, so we're heading out with our umbrellas. I'm a pancake. I'm a pancake. Hang out with your besties. I know. Across the world. We are working with our best friends. Traveling, working, wow. who does that? <laughs> Kyoto used to be the capital of Japan and that was in the 700s to the 1800s. It also used to be the largest city in Japan but that title of course now goes to Tokyo. It also used to be on the list as a target for the atomic bomb but it was removed from that list because of its historical significance. And so glad they did because this is known as the more traditional historical part of Japan. The Gion district is known as being the Geisha district. And we're gonna see if we can find some kimonos for the girls. It's in a kimono store and it looks like it's open so we're gonna go in and see if we can rent a, a kimono here. Brooklyn is gonna dress up in a kimono. She's picking out her fabric. Uh, the two girls, they're gonna look so cute together. We're heading upstairs for the whole process, the getting dressed process. We were all gonna get dressed up in kimonos, but since it's raining outside, we decided mix that. We're gonna let the girls get dressed up here, take a few photos, and then we'll be on our way. Kimonos are the official national dress of Japan. They've been wearing them for over a millennium. That's a thousand years. They used to be worn as everyday clothing, but now it's mostly for special events. So it has these square sleeves and then a perfectly rectangular body. And it's worn with the left side flipped over the right side, unless you're deceased, in which case it would be the opposite. It's absolutely nuts how she has this skill to know all these little tucks and folds to make what is kind of a one size robe fit all these different body types and sizes. Picture time and then we're gonna hit the road. <laughs> I feel like 
We're passing so many temples on our way, but that's no surprise because there are over 3,000 temples in Kyoto. And this is Yasaka Shrine. It used to be called Gion Shrine and it marks one of the boundaries of the Gion District. So we're here. We have made it to the famous street in the Gion District in Kyoto is Hanamokoji. And uh, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I'm doing my best. And this is uh, known for seeing geishas. And if you don't know what a geisha is, it is a special class of female. And they are considered artists. It's a very, very hard job to get and because it takes years and years of training. And they're considered entertainers because they have so much training in dance and music and art and entertaining and they get paid a lot of money. There's usually a really high, expensive clientele. It's such a hard job or qualification to get because it takes six years of being an apprentice to get the skills to be called a geisha. You can often see some on this street going to and from a job. You can't approach them. You're supposed to just admire them from afar. So if we spot one, we'll just wave. <laughs> These streets are so cute. We're looking for a little place to get some food, maybe a sakitini, and get out of the rain a bit. And these kids, they're so cute, bundled up, sharing their umbrellas. I'm so bummed, I feel like we're getting rained out, but we are in search of a place to eat. So we're headed to Panchoto Alley, which is a well-known area for great restaurants. Success at last. Sushi place, downstairs. Oh, we've got a private room again. Well done. Well done. Oh, I'm so happy we're finally sitting down and dry and look at the steam on these towels. It's really kind of a bummer that the weather isn't cooperating with us. It's the way it goes, we're making the best of it. We're just so grateful that we're here with our friends. Exploring the world, traveling with your friends, nothing better. Yay! Thank you. Our first sake in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> More excited than she should be, probably. <laughs> we are jet lagged. It took us two hours to find a restaurant. We're in Japan. What can be more exciting than sake? Horse meat. Horse meat! <laughs> <laughs> never above you, never below you, always beside you. Always beside you. <laughs> so good. That is so so yummy! Oh my gosh, it is so delicious! This is the best sake we have had, and it's the first sake we've had in Japan. So that adds up. Here come the kids' apple juices. I'm sure they're gonna be just as excited about those. How cute are they? Sharing apple juices. The kids love each other so much, and the adults love each other so much. We're a perfect collab. Never above you, never below you, always beside you. Cheers, my friend. They are so cute! BFFs forever! You want me to eat horse meat right now? You have to subscribe or follow if you're posting this on Instagram or YouTube. Of course! Oh, wow. It kind of looks like tuna. Oh gosh! I'll just have it like this. <laughs> oh. No. Yes or no? Is that a yes or a no? It tastes good. I feel bad for the horse meat. Yeah. It's good, it's but it's not. Right I don't think it's good enough to kill a horse for it. This is Black Beauty, and this is Mr. Ed. Who's another famous horse? Sea Biscuit. Okay. Okay, Sea Biscuits right here. Which one you have until? Uh, sea Biscuit sounds really good because I want some carbs tonight. <laughs> Feeding some black stallion. <laughs> it smells like this raw meat. Black stallion. Sorry. It's really chewy. Super chewy. It's really good though. The rice looks kind of dark. Like, is this brown rice that they're using? I love that if they do. I love brown rice. <laughs> I just thought about the horse. <laughs> Big mistake. But that's actually really good. My piece was very tender. I wish I had eaten it without the rice so I could get that flavor more. Because it's hard to really tell the difference between that and a normal beef steak. But I think it's really good. It is really She's good. She's absolutely right. I would eat that all day. It's delicious. But what would you kill a horse for it again? I didn't kill a horse for it this time. Somebody else did that for me. I would do that part again. You know, Phil actually had horse testicles in 
Philippines in Cebu, so you have to check out that episode because that was epic. It's very chewy. Mine is not tender. We got more than just horse. We got a whole smorgasbord of sushi, and this is melt-in-your-mouth salmon, and it's also our first sushi in Japan. They're right. It's like, where's the salmon? Where's the salmon? It literally melts in your mouth, right? It seriously feels like the salmon disappears. This is so big with me because at, when I go to sushi places, there's either salmon that's hard to bite through because of the connective tissue, or there's salmon that you can bite through like butter. And the difference between those two is night and day. It's either amazing or it's horrible. Amazing. So oily too. Like, yeah. in a great way. Is that just the salmon oil? The um, I have no idea. Uh, that is phenomenal salmon. Wow. I feel like I'm literally getting healthier just having that bite of salmon. Yeah. You know what's so amazing is that we're not at like the top rated place we could find. This is like we were walking by and we were desperate to stop somewhere and to find this place and for it to be this good, it's just a testament to how good the fish is in general in Japan. This is, it's more than we could have expected. It doesn't even have a Michelin star. The chef says that the reason the rice looks like it's brown rice instead of white rice is because it's mixed with black vinegar. I'll take it. I mean, if it looks like brown rice, it's good enough for me. Mackerel liver. Boy, oh, that's a first. Right? Well, that was unexpected. No body to it whatsoever. Like, you're not biting through anything. It's like butter or whipped cream, except that it's like this of the sea flavor. I probably wouldn't say it tastes like it's liver because it doesn't taste that fatty. But you really get that, that flavor of the sea and it's just a little bit foamy. 100% delicious. They call it the foie gras of the sea. I also got some really cool pieces here. The raw scallop. It's smoked really, really good. There's like zero chewiness. This is so not horse. Zero sea flavor. It's just so good and like buttery. Just a tender, subtle, elegant taste to it. Elegant flavor. <laughs> My last little piece I have here is it's shrimp with caviar. And I smeared some wasabi on it because this is excellent wasabi. It's so good. The best wasabi has like little hard chunks of the radish in it. That is just as good as the scallop. It is so good. It, it's almost like the salmon where it melts in your mouth and it's like water. And it's like the scallop too where it just has this like subtle, elegant flavor to it. The seafood in Japan is on point. Oh my God, I'm in heaven. I am in food heaven here. My last bite of the night is gonna be this one which is wrapped in a little eggshell with the rice and salmon roe and salmon. And it's gonna take me so long to eat this. That's it for me for tonight at this restaurant. So, see you outside. Had a lot of sake tonight, ma'am? Yeah. <laughs> We took the Lamborghini. Good sake on your first night in Japan with us. I know, it was the best first <laughs> night. Yeah. Second first night. <laughs> this is the best second first night in Japan. <laughs> the ultimate vacation with the best. Okay, let's close this out. More to come. We have more of Kyoto to show you. More of this phenomenal hotel to show you. So subscribe, stick with us, and subscribe to Mom Duty too. And always be changing. Make sure you subscribe to their <laughs> videos. <laughs> Double tap. <laughs> we are the Lockwoods. Aaron, Phil, Reagan, Brooklyn, and Cole. We're traveling the world to experience, up close and in person, all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise be consuming only through textbooks and TV. We think it's a better way to learn, and we're working hard to fund this little experiment in the hope that our kids will grow up wiser, kinder, and more grateful for the beauty of our diverse planet and its people. We're heading upstairs. They're gonna go through I am into some dry. Oh! Oh. <laughs> hey, this is too <laughs> <laughs> Only two shots of sake.
sake and that's it. Um, we're out of sake. That was a raw shrimp. And it just, what? You're flipping everybody off. I was, I thought you were flipping me off. I didn't know what to do. You're doing the 